In this video we're going to continue looking at graphing trig functions and we're going to look at how we can uh, shift our functions up or down vertically. So we're going to look at what factors affect uh, the vertical shift. Okay, so we've already mentioned that trig functions co come in the form of y equals a sine nx plus b and a cos nx plus b. We're going to have a look at the effect of this constant, which could be positive or negative, at the end of our function. Okay, so there you have the function y equals sine x. Now you know that this function here has a maximum value of 1 and a minimum value of negative 1. So what happens when we think about the function y equals sine x plus 1? Well this plus 1 here adds 1 to the maximum value and adds 1 to the minimum value. So that means it's going to have a maximum value of 2 and a minimum value of 0. So that's what you've got. The whole function has shifted up by one whole unit. Now, what about y equals sine x minus 2? What happens then? If we use this green function, y equals sine x as our starting point, the negative 2 is going to reduce every single value down by 2. So the whole thing moves down by 2 units. Okay? So you can see there how we started off with y equals sine x Adding 1 gave us the purple one, taking away 2 gave us the red one. Okay, so this constant at the end here has the effect of shifting the whole function up or down. It tells us how much it has been shifted up or down by. So it can be thought of as uh, determining the vertical shift of your function. Okay. Now, let's have a look at a few questions and let's see if you can come up with the equations yourselves. Okay, so what you've got here is y equals cos x, but the whole thing has been moved up by 1. Now, normally you would expect the cosine function to start at 1. This time it's starting at 2. You can see the amplitude is still 1 because your range of values from maximum to minimum is 2. So it's just y equals cos x plus 1. How about this one? Well, we know it's y equals sine x, but the whole thing has shifted down. Normally sine x would start at 0. This time we're starting at negative 2. So the whole thing has dropped down by 2. So you just add the constant, negative 2, at the end. Okay? How about this one? Well, what have we got? We've got y equals negative sine x. Now, but the whole thing has been raised up by 1, because instead of starting at 0, you're starting at 1. So it's negative sine x plus 1. And as for this one, what you've got is y equals cos x. But instead of starting at 1, like you normally would, you're starting at 3. So the whole thing has gone up by, not 3, sorry, but by 2. Okay, the whole thing has gone up by 2. So instead of having a minimum value at negative 1, your minimum value is now 1. Okay? Now, just to summarize then what we've looked at so far, this value A here is what determines your amplitude. N here is the number of cycles in 360 degrees. And finally, this B here is the vertical shift. If it's positive, it moves the whole thing up. If it's negative, it moves the whole thing down. So I hope that was helpful, and I hope you now are quite competent at determining amplitude, the number of cycles, and the vertical shift.